a document that uh, he used. Mm -hmm. I have had uh, an, an opportunity to look at the executive summary. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would agree with him that probably that is the best uh, decision that uh, an executive can do. Because uh, there is an indication in that report that uh, I think it's their old dam mm -hmm. that has a crack and definitely it cannot sustain water. Would the you Kimura go ahead? Yeah, no. I has think a fault line? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, there is one that has a fault line. Yes, Kimura, And if there is yes. a fault line mm -hmm. on, a, on a dam, how would you go ahead to construct a dam on it? You are creating even more problems and there will be no water anyway because of that fault line. How was this approved, do you think, then, in the beginning? Uh, I think that is why there are lots of questions about it. And uh, you see, if also a project is uh, priced wildly, why, how would a president say, go ahead? Uh, I don't think he, he would be making a reasonable decision. And yet he did. And up until um, the... Uh, uh, noise around it regarding alleged corruption. This was a project that pretty much was still going to stay on course with a fault line being overpriced. Yeah, but uh, I'm telling you, this is a situation where now the president has been personally given the executive report or from by experts uh, after checking what the whole situation is like and you've been given that report. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to make a, a reasonable decision under the circumstances mm -hmm. and notwithstanding the problems that may have occurred before or other mistakes before, you cannot continue to perpetuate a problem. Does it by require censure more. for mm -hmm. whoever proposed yes, I, think, I think beyond that, uh, mm -hmm. after doing that, he puts a stop. I don't think he should stop there. He should get uh, down to the bottom of this problem. Who are the engineers who approved this thing? How did they develop it knowing there was a fault line uh, in that particular dam? And then this excessive uh, overpricing, uh, how, how did it happen okay. under his watch? Yeah. Ordinarily, if this was a parliamentary system of government, mm -hmm. I think uh, whoever was in charge of the executive would, would, would have been censored in parliament. Assuming that parliament is a parliament similar to the ones that we know all over the, the world. The deputy president defended viciously the, these two uh, dams, uh, but that was particularly on the allegations of corruption. Now with this kind of um, document uh, emanating from the presidency, what does that mean? What does that say? Well, I, I, I really don't think uh, the deputy president uh, could have been arguing with the technical information available. Mm. I, the, the last time I heard about his argument was that only 7 billion was lost and Correct. not 21. Mm -hmm. uh, within a short while, it was clearly shown that it was more than the 7 billion he was talking about. And I think he, he kept quiet after that. Uh, and I don't think he, uh, to be fair, I have not seen him arguing about the technical questions mm -hmm. in this report. Mm -hmm. And if he would have to challenge the technical issues in, the, in, that, in that report, then then you would have to tell us but what But we have what seen other are. leaders uh, from the region challenge it, uh, particularly S Senator Murkomen, who criticized the makeup of the technical committee uh, that arrived at this conclusion, saying they are from one region. Um, and he said, quote, the people of El Marquet have been denied their right and discriminated against. Other leaders have joined uh, in that kind of uh, condemnation of this move. What do you make of that? Yeah, I think uh, I'm not so sure whether he has looked at the report himself. Uh, I'm not sure whether Murkomen, I think it was just off the cuff. I think he was simply shooting from the hip. That is the ordinary thing he would want. He was addressing the gallery, mm -hmm. as we would say in Parliament, mm -hmm. that he was speaking to the gallery, not really looking at the facts. If, what would Murkomen say mm -hmm. if there is a fault line? And it is immaterial where engineers come from. The point here is, if you are an engineer or you are a doctor and you have been told to do a post-mortem or you have been told to do surgery. You mm -hmm. would basically do it as a doctor, not as somebody from mm -hmm. the Himalayas mm -hmm. or, or somebody from Belgeo Maraquet. They are all the same. If you, if By you Himalayas, do you mean Mount Kenya? <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, no, no. But uh, your <laughs> point is made. Um, uh, you know, but having said that, even with that decision made, billions have been paid out already. Yes. yes. How does the taxpayer get back their money? That is now the million dollar questions. Uh, on the table of President Uhuru. No recommendations for him? No, it is on his table. He has got to show us the way forward. That's his headache. He has to. Okay. He has to get out of that quagmire. He has to explain to us where the money is. It is his government. And you see, 
ordinarily now, if this was a parliamentary government once again, mm -hmm. the, the head of the executive would have been made to account. Mm -hmm. And if he can't account, he should be shown the door. So where does the accountability, though, in this system work? Is it the cabinet secretaries? Is, where, where would you draw the you line see, in terms of following responsibility? The yes. buck stops mm. somewhere. With the president? At the, chief, uh, chief of the, uh, at, the, at the door of the chief executive. It would stop uh, at the door of the prime minister if this was a parliamentary government. So light stops at the door of the president. I believe this should stop uh, at his door. And so but, but now, once he has taken action, like he has done, mm -hmm. he has already arraigned the minister of... Uh, he has already indicted the minister of... Uh, Treasury. Treasury mm -hmm. and the other functionaries. Mm -hmm. and, and I think he's taking some action. So if you were to call him, you know, you would be asking him, what have you done in saying you there is something going on already? Right. Yeah. So uh, the president has already taken action. It, coupled with what has been going on with Aurora and Kimoreru, you know, of course, that came up with on the back of many, many headlines uh, alleging corruption widespread within this administration. Uh, in your view, is there a selective war on corruption that targets specifically leaders from your region? I have not fallen into that argument. I think... Um, the war on corruption should be allowed to continue because we must bring sanity to this republic. I have no problem with the investigations being done left, right and center. Yeah. And we can't just keep saying, we, are not, we do not monopolize uh, corrupt people. Uh, there are so many corrupt people all over the place. They are not just uh, uh, located in, uh, in Rift Valley. Valley. <laughs> no, they, and the people who have, who have been actually taken to court are from all over the republic. Uh -huh. It happens that it uh, quite a number uh, because uh, are either Kikuyu or Kalenjin. Uh -huh. uh, if, I, if I can be as... Uh, uh -huh. As frank. And, as and frank as that. Right. Uh, you see, uh, but you see, the division of government was between TNA and URP. And uh, URP was heavily Kalenjin, TNA was heavily Kikuyu. Uh -huh. If the two shared offices and corruption occurred in there, all of them will just be fried. Having said that, the, the, you know, the deputy president's allies have said that the war on corruption is specifically targeted at stopping him or his allies in his quest for 2022. Do you see that connection? I don't see any connection with that. Do you believe, as some in uh, your NASA alliance have claimed, that the deputy president is corrupt? I don't know about that. I, I, I would be making wild allegations. Do you I would probably be accused of liberal. Do you believe that the DPP has been carrying out his work independently? I have seen the DCI and the DPP becoming quite enthusiastic about their work. And I think, and having passion to do something about the problem. I think uh, that is commendable for such officers to, to do their work well. And, and, and I thought that should be replicated uh, across the, the hierarchy of government, that everyone who is given a job should have a passion for it. Mm. And, and, and I think if Kinoti was given the job and he is passionate about doing it, uh, I, I think he should be allowed to do it. Otherwise, why would you want a DCI who does not do any investigations or who is scared of doing the job? Why would you have a DPP uh, who is also either scared or uh, confused or uh, actually uh, gets carried away by the power and the glory of the office and, gets and, and decides to go wild? But there are those who see the political connection, and I, I want to quote again Senator Murkomen. At the time that the Aurora and Kimorera arrests were being made, uh, the DPP came to the media, had a very long statement that he issued. At the conclusion of it, he talked about uh, the government being on alert uh, regarding anyone who would want to cause chaos out of the impending arrests. And uh, the senator who um, uh, is legally representing some of these people said, you know, that in itself is a highly political statement. He has also, in separate quarters, talked about the DCI being on a witch hunt. Are you saying that there does not appear to you to be some kind of political connection to the arrests that are being made, whether it is political goodwill or political whatever? Yeah. You see, uh, there is a pattern uh, that has uh, been adopted by this government in which every activity they intend to do 
seems to be preceded by mm -hmm. some statements mm -hmm. of intent. Right. Yeah, the government keeps uh, announcing what it wants to do. Keeps announcing what they want to do. Uh -huh. And uh, I would ordinarily also call it probably either preparing the public or propaganda from whichever side you think. For example, when I look at what they are saying about the Mao, they have convinced all Kenyans mm -hmm. that these people are living in the forest and that actually the schools are purportedly in the forest, that these are actually people who simply went in there and started cutting down the trees. And, and, and that is the information they are putting forth. And the press has bought it and it's splashing it all over the place. So the real information tends to get clouded. But, uh, so the government should fault. just keep quiet and work? This is a fault of government. No, you can't do that. Yeah. You know, the other option is government not to say anything. If government doesn't say anything, then the people could easily have an uprising. Uh -huh. Because what are the reasons? Then the, the only reasons that would be available is uh -huh. the one from Murkome. Uh -huh. That you see, we are actually being witch hunted. Right, right. So, so, so it is imperative on any government to give information to the people prior to taking any drastic uh, action. I hold no brief for the DPP. But I bet if Murkomen was uh, the president today, he would release the same information prior to doing anything he wants to do. <laughs> so there is nothing absolutely wrong with the DPP preparing Kenyans that, look, I have this, and it is quite uh, heavy, but uh, I'm prepared to proceed. And the other agencies, take care and take charge of your area. You've talked about favoring our parliamentary system as we talk about the constitution now. Um, do you believe that it is time to amend the constitution now? I, I, I believed it five years ago. I wanted it done. All what is being debated on now mm. is what I was pushing under personal. No time like the present. Yeah. No time like the present. There's no time like the present. Yes, there is no time like now. You know, we you should do it. Yeah. Like today. <laughs> so you, yeah, you've talked about Pesa Mashinani and uh, governors have come up with the Ugatuzi proposals and part of what they're proposing there is a reserve of 45% of the previous year's revenues for counties. That is something you would Precisely. support. Yes. What do you think of the Ugatuzi proposals in general? Ugatuzi proposals are quite up. I'm quite satisfied with it and mm -hmm. uh, I instantly support the Ugatusi <laughs> amendments to the constitution. That's because you want to become a government not governor? Not necessarily. I believe in devolution. Not necessarily. I have not declared any position right now. But uh, the point here is what I believed in last time, I still believe in the same. It does not matter who the governor is. In fact, uh, I can even agree.